Hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I have your updates today on the extreme weather, not only for the temperatures we have now, I'm still showing it's going to be even more extreme in the days coming, and it is moving more east in the country. Plus, we have a potential for a tornado outbreak for today, mostly for eastern Iowa, as well where I'm at in Wisconsin, and a tornado outbreak is when you have at least six tornadoes, and I believe we will reach that point. Plus, I'm still showing in the tropics that it is trending that we still have a potential tropical storm hurricane coming into our Gulf. Now, I always love answering y'all questions, and I will be here for a little while for all you guys. But remember, today I have to go out and go get these groceries because we do feed people every single month. And remember, if you want to be part of that, links are in the description to help support that. Thank you for all your support and helping feeding people now i don't want to go to all these that is where you get your cheapest prices i don't want to hurt people that's already going for the deals so i will be going to walmart's probably all over the place trying to get these groceries and make sure we have what we need for tomorrow now tropical storm blas will be a hurricane for a good bit right now is at 69 miles per hour winds it is very close to a hurricane already and it is moving west now at three miles per hour so there's no more of that northern towards Mexico. And I am showing that Invest 93E over here. The next disturbance has an Invest now. Remember the energy is coming from the one in the Caribbean. It will weaken down, come around the Central American gyre, and it will come around and give energy to this one as it moves to the west. And it will become your next name system in the Pacific. It will be Celia. It will become a storm and possibly a hurricane as well. And then, of course, this one over here in the Caribbean, Invest 93L. It is showing a weakening this morning, just like I showed you yesterday. It was showing that it was going to be weakening soon, and it is weakening. And it is going to gyrate around, get in with this Invest over here in the Pacific, and then move west and become the next name storm over there. Plus, I'm still showing that we still have that system coming up and heading into our Gulf, and it's still showing the same area, somewhere around Houston, Texas, and that is what the trend has been. It's so far, sometime around the late 20s, so far at the end of June, we still have this storm coming towards Texas. And with a big high pressure that is setting up over here, that is what's spinning this into the Gulf. It will also stay a little strong and go around to the other states in the country as it comes around. So I will keep you updated. It's still a little too far to show any kind of impacts. I just want to keep you updated, especially on the tropics. Plus, as this low pressure forms up by eastern Iowa today, it will create this nasty front line of storms that will be a potential good potential for tornado outbreak. But I'm still showing it will swing right back around and cause problems for the southeast. Very high winds, not only chances for 70, 80, even possibly 90 today in, in Wisconsin where I'm at. You still have a chance for those very high winds just like they've seen in Ohio Valley, which is still dealing with a lot of power outages. But these high winds are also coming to the southeast for Wednesday a little bit, but even worse for Thursday. So remember, all these links are always in the description to help save you time if you need to see the temperatures, the severe weather, or the tropics. I'm always here to try and help you save time. Please use them if you need them. God bless every single one of you. I hope you have a very blessed day today. And if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. My name is Mark. And they are still dealing with the power outages, guys. So far, Ohio is down to 180,000 people. So that's half of what they've been having. They're still in the red at over 100,000. West Virginia, 33,000. Indiana, 25,000. Wisconsin, 16,000. That will go up for Wisconsin today. There will be a lot of power outages for us over here as well. And Michigan, you have 11,000. First, let's talk about the tropics. First, we have Tropical Storm Blas, like I just showed you, moving west still. And we have that Disturbance 1 is up to 60% in the next 48 hours or the next five days. This is your Invest 93E. As you can see, it is going to be a hurricane soon and go all the way until 1 a.m. on Saturday before it goes back down to a tropical storm. Now, this is not going to go towards Hawaii, but this one and the next one that does form up 
could gyrate around with precipitation, bringing some rainfall towards Arizona, New Mexico, all y'all that do need it. But also, as you can see, Mexico, you're still only in about the 5 to 10% chance of getting tropical storm force winds as at least up to 39 miles per hour winds and wind gusts and that's what i'm seeing that you're going to get is just a little edge of that remember all these links are in the description for you to go check out for yourself and as you look for the hurricane names for 2022 for the eastern pacific you can see that the next name storm is celia but you can also see right here that normally when these systems form up on eastern pacific that it does revolve around in this direction and that can bring precipitation to the southwest where y'all been needing it and the update on the one in the Caribbean, Disturbance 1 Invest 93L, it is showing the weakening that we've been talking about, and it's going down to 20% in the next 48 hours and 30% in the next five days. And I'm still showing that this energy is still going to gyrate around the Central American gyre, go into the Eastern Pacific, get with Invest 93E, and it is going to still form up Celia going into the Pacific as well. And here's our updates on these other tropical waves because we still have two or three still out there. Now we have another tropical wave that is in the eastern Atlantic with axis along 25 west, 15 north southward, and it is moving west at 15 to 20 knots. And that would put this right about here. And it is moving west, still being suppressed by the dust. Remember, all this precipitation is going to stay southward for quite some time. And that has scattered showers prevail in the vicinity of the wave. Next tropical wave is in the central Atlantic with axis along 58 west from 15 north southward, moving west at 15 to 20 knots. And that would put that one right about here, about to go towards Venezuela going west. And it has scattered moderate convection is noted across the northern half of that wave. Then we have our Invest 93L, a tropical wave is in the Central Caribbean with access along 76 west from 18 north southward and it is moving west at 10 to 15 knots. And that is ours right here moving west towards the Yucatan Peninsula. And it has scattered showers are noted across the northern half of this wave. So remember this link is in the description for you as well so you can go read all the other updates that's going on in the tropics. Plus, I'm still showing that we have this big high pressure that is going to be coming in around the 24th and it is going to go to the east southeast and that is right there is what is pulling this right into the Gulf of Mexico going towards Texas. Now, Farmers Almanac always showed it be the Texas, Louisiana coast, but lately it's been showing a little bit further to the west where it's more like towards Houston. But so far, it is still showing it is still coming and it is going to gyrate around and bring more rainfall and storms to more people. And as you look at your whole setup, you have Blas over here moving to the west. But you have your Invest 93E right here. You have your 90, Invest 93L right here in the Caribbean. And as you follow it, you can see that it does weaken down as it goes across Nicaragua, Honduras, towards Yucatan Peninsula, towards Belize. And it does come back around towards the invest in the Pacific. And it does help form up the strength just like we seen yesterday. And it does form up Celia and head to the west. And the next tropical wave gets away from that dust because it does still thin out pretty good, guys. And it does form up somewhere around Nicaragua, Honduras, around the 24th. And it does still head towards the Western Caribbean and still go into the Gulf of Mexico. But like I said, with this high pressure setting up over here, it would not be able to go towards Florida, Georgia, Alabama, even Mississippi. It would go in this pattern and follow this all the way around. That's why you see it go in that direction. You can also see from the Pacific sides that as Tropical Storm Hurricane Blas keeps going to the west, that the energy forms up with the two invests and that becomes Celia and that takes the same path. Keep going west, maybe bring some more winds towards Mexico, but still stays off land as it revolves around. Now this could bring a lot more precipitation towards the southwest towards the end of this month, sometime around the 24th through the 28th and bring y'all some more rainfall. I will update you. I don't want to show you the rainfall now and give you hopes up too high for rain coming and then it don't show so i will show you that as we get closer and get more accurate information and your update on the nasa satellite with the dust 
you can see as it starts to form up, they invest over here in the Pacific side as we go through Thursday and keep moving. Then you start getting the invest that goes towards the Yucatan. It does revolve around together, becomes one piece of energy as this high pressure of dust moves through, keeps it to the west, southwest, and that's what forms up Celia right in the Pacific side and it stays suppressed. So that would not be able to go towards northern Mexico. That will be a, another Pacific storm after Blas. You can also see that the thinning out that happens after that. There's a lot of thinning out in the dust as this next wave starts to make its way to the west northwest as well. And when you look across the whole basin, you can see that the thinning out in that dust gets really thin. It, all these waves coming through and then it stretches way out with the dust and everything gets very much elongated. That's why we have that opportunity for this coming to our Western Caribbean, our Gulf of Mexico towards the end of this month because this dust does thin out. And I still have the links for your rainfall amounts as well as your winds so y'all can check it out and zoom in. And GFS is still showing that it will be heavier towards Nicaragua and Honduras, Acapulco all the way to Manzanillo. And the Euro takes it a little bit lighter, but it does go more towards Guatemala City. So it is a little hit and miss with both. So if I were you, I would take the numbers and go right in half of both of them and just take cautions of possible mudslides that will come from these storms as well as Central America. It is showing a lot lighter for Belize, even with the Euro. Both of them are showing a lot lighter for Belize, but you're still getting a few inches of rainfall coming your way. But the coast of Nicaragua and Honduras is showing that no matter what, that is where it's going to be pretty heavy at. So please be aware of that. But you can also see with your wind gusts how much it has calmed down for the Yucatan Peninsula. But you can see all the way from Manzanillo all the way to Acapulco, Mexico, that y'all will get somewhere around 30 miles per hour wind gusts coming with this just on the edge. And Euro takes it to where it could go a little bit towards Guatemala City as these gyrate around the Central American gyre. And it could bring some winds towards y'all. So remember this link is there for you. All you got to do is zoom into your area and see exactly what your potential impacts will be from these storms. But as you continue to look towards the 300 millibar, which shows you your jet stream, the setup is still the same that we've been talking about over a week now on this channel. So if you'd like to be alerted early, make sure you subscribe. And thank you all of you that has shared and liked the video from yesterday. Because believe me, you alerted so many people you have saved lives. So God bless you all. Now, the setup is going to go even more extreme, bring even more hot temperatures to everybody. And I'm still showing this very high ridge still coming. And it will bring hotter temperatures coming up to the upper Midwest by this weekend. And it's still going to move towards the east after that for next week. So you still have some very hot temperatures. Matter of fact, the 100 teens that we've seen for the southwest and possibly the central plains is going to move towards the southeast. And y'all going to be somewhere around 110, 115 degrees for a bunch of y'all. And that's just temperatures. That's not your heat index. Heat index would make it a lot worse. So let's go through the heat real quick. Let y'all get updated on y'all temperatures. So let's keep everybody in mind for the west side of the U.S. As you go through your temperatures for today, it's going to get very hot for a lot of you. As you go through tomorrow, it is going to carry this heat once again, bringing over 100 degrees to a lot of people. As you go through Thursday and Friday, Friday, it gets pretty hot as well, and it starts going a little more towards the upper Midwest. But as you go through Saturday, that's where it really starts climbing towards the upper Midwest, and we start getting this transition from Saturday into Sunday, bringing 100 degree temperatures even over to Montana. And that's just temperatures, not heat index. As you go through Sunday, it will continue to carry to the upper Midwest, and then it'll start going towards the east for Monday, but you're still gonna have very hot temperatures in the Central Plains and the Southwest. So it's just because it's going towards the east don't mean y'all gonna skip out on those temperatures. Now it's gonna be very hot as you go through Tuesday for the Southwest. This is one of your extreme days I am showing of over 110 degree temperatures, not your heat index. And as you go through Wednesday, it will get even worse. Definitely over 110 degrees for a lot of people in the Southwest as this continues to build. And you got it again for Thursday over 115 degree temperatures. So please be aware, the heat is just getting started. We have worse temperatures coming than what we're dealing with now. 
And for the central U.S., your temperatures today will get nice and toasty for you as you go through Thursday. Then it's going to build again, and it's going to bring a lot of hot temperatures for a lot of people. But as you go through Friday, this is where it starts bringing up this setup of these warm temperatures towards the upper Midwest. 100 degree temperatures start rising up. The 90s start rising up. And this isn't your heat index, like I said, because yesterday it wasn't in the hundreds, but it was 101 in Milwaukee with the heat index. It was very hot. Then as we go towards Saturday, this is where it starts setting up with that high ridge. And it brings all these hot temperatures all the way up to the upper Midwest. And then it shifts to the east as you go towards Sunday, still bringing all these very hot temperatures. Now, as you go towards Monday, it starts relaxing down a little bit, but you still have very hot hundreds reaching a lot of people and you're still in the 90s. And as you go to Tuesday, it's going to bring back the hot temperatures again, over 105 degrees for the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley. I will show you for the East Coast as well. And as you go through Wednesday, it's still bringing all these very hot temperatures, 90s and over 100. And for Thursday, once again, very hot temperatures, over 105 degrees for the southeast. I will show you. So for the east side of the U.S., as you go through today, it will bring some very hot temperatures, y'all. 90s, maybe even reach 100. I'm showing sure eventually this is even going to go into northern Florida. As you go for Thursday, it's going to bring the hot temperatures again for y'all, even though it's mostly in the west in the central plains. A lot of y'all are going to be reaching the 100 degree mark. As you go through towards Friday, this is where it goes more towards the upper Midwest, but you're still going to have some very hot temperatures coming in, but you got them storms that's going to be cooling it down as well. Now, as you go through Saturday, this is where it's doing its peak for the upper Midwest. So you do get a lot of temperatures. It's not super extreme, but this is where it starts coming your way. Then towards Sunday, it starts leaning a little more towards the east. This is where the deep south starts getting in over 100 degree temperatures. That's without your heat index. Please remember that. And please remember these temperatures are taken in the shade. So this is the best is going to feel. But as you go towards Monday, this is where it starts coming your way. Towards Monday, it starts bringing some very extreme temperatures over 100 degrees, almost 105 for a lot of people. Then as you go through Tuesday, it gets even more extreme. I'm telling you, we're going to get more and worse temperatures than what we're dealing with now. As we're looking for Tuesday, look at this. Over 105 degree temperatures for the whole mid-Atlantic as well as for the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley. Then as you go through Wednesday, it brings very much extreme temperatures for the mid-Atlantic. Look at this. Over 105, almost 110 for a lot of people, not to mention a lot of people, 100 to 105 right here as well. And this, again, is only your temperatures. So your heat index with all this 105, 110 is just going to be crazy. So please, for the next couple of weeks, please watch your pets in your vehicles, your family in your vehicles. Watch your pets outside. Make sure they have water. Because when Thursday comes back around, it's going to come back again. And it's going to start going towards northern Florida with over 100 degrees. But once again, a lot of y'all are going to be in over 110 degree temperatures come next Thursday, especially Wednesday and Thursday. Please be aware of these temperatures, guys. This is very dangerous temperatures. And for our severe weather, as we look at our 850 millibar, you can see how it does bring some serious storms today. And I will go a little bit more in depth for you so you can see what to expect on the tornadoes. As it goes around into Wisconsin, northern Michigan, even goes in towards Canada, and you get this big line stretched all the way down towards Oklahoma, Kansas, northern Missouri, even northern Illinois get in on that too. But as you continue to watch, that it also brings storms to the southeast for today, and this revolves back around just like I showed you yesterday. It keeps going around this high pressure, and it revolves back around again for tomorrow and brings more storms towards the southeast and i'm still seeing a lot of downdrafts and very high winds before today they have upgraded your slight risk in the southeast because they are seeing those winds now that we talked about yesterday here on my channel and as you look for your tornado threat you're the two percent in the green five percent in the brown ten percent chance in this yellow as well as significant severe in this yellow and that's exactly where we see some long track long-lived cells possible tornado outbreak for this afternoon.
So here's your cities at risk for your tornado threat, and your significant severe is the same as the 10%. Madison, Wisconsin, Green Bay, Wisconsin, Appleton, Wisconsin, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and Dubuque, Iowa, as well as your 5%. Once again, I'm in this as well again. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Rockford, Illinois, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Davenport, Iowa, and Rochester, Minnesota, as well as your 2% as well. Chicago, Illinois, Kansas City, Missouri, Minneapolis, Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota, and Des Moines, Iowa. But this also will bring some very high winds. I'm showing still up to 80 and 90 miles per hour wind gusts is coming with this system. And like I said, they are showing the winds right here for the southeast as well. And I'm showing that's going to be later on this evening. But I'm showing it's still going to be a little worse for tomorrow. So they're not showing the winds yet for tomorrow. But I think tomorrow they will upgrade for the winds just like they upgraded this one from what I showed you yesterday. And you have your 30% right here in the red and significant severe in this black for winds for today. And you can see your significant severe and your 30% chance for very high winds today is Madison, Wisconsin, Green Bay, Wisconsin, Appleton, Wisconsin, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, as well as Dubuque, Iowa. And you do see your 15% chance and your 5% chance in the brown. And it's bringing significant hail still, guys. You have your big 30% in this red, and a black is a significant severe for today. So the same cities that has the winds, that has a tornado threat, has the big hail threat. 30% as well as a significant severe. Madison, Wisconsin, Green Bay, Wisconsin, Appleton, Wisconsin, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and Dubuque. Iowa and you do see the 15% and the 5% in the brown and this is what I waited for on my video today I wanted to 12 Z the latest information that we can get from the weather balloons for those chances for tornadoes and I'm still showing that right when it hits two o'clock when this line of storms when this low pressure forms over Iowa that it will start creating this event and it will start at 3 p.m. So at 3 p.m., we started getting some nasty cells towards northeastern Iowa. All that purple right there, as well as northern Minnesota, is indicative to large hail. You can see with your shear that it is starting to get some shear on that cell right there for northeastern Iowa as it moves through for 3 p.m. As you go through 4 p.m., it gets a lot more severe going into southwestern Wisconsin, as well as some more cells going into northeastern Iowa. But as you look with your shear, you can see the cell that's going into southwestern Wisconsin is getting a lot of shear on it. That is going to be a very extreme event. I do expect a potential tornado out of that. And that is four. And as you go into five o'clock, it starts spreading out to a whole line of nasty cells. And all this purple in all these cells has a chance for dropping very much two inches plus of hail. This will be very large hail that comes out of this. And it is getting shear on these cells all through Wisconsin as it passes by. As you go to 6 p.m., it will stretch out even more across Wisconsin. Every one of these cells across northern Michigan does have chances for large hail to come out of them. That's why you see that purple in that. Look at a bow and out in that as well, and I'm showing some very extreme winds. When you look at your shear, you see also these cells has a lot of shear in it as well as northern Michigan. All these cells has a lot of shear on it as it passes through the state. So you need to be aware all evening long as we go through 7 p.m. and moves even further to the east. But northern Michigan, you still have strong cells going from you into Canada. You see the purple in them. This is all indicative to a very large hail coming out of these cells as well as for southeastern Iowa this time at 7 p.m. And you can see they are getting some shear on them. The one on southeastern Iowa is not that much on it, but it starts getting a little bit of shear on it. But look right here when it travels from 6 p.m. It does start getting some good shear, then the shear weakens down. So I am showing northeastern Iowa, southeastern Iowa, even eastern Iowa. But all these cells that is coming through Wisconsin as well as northern Michigan, you are getting a lot of shear on these cells as they pop in front of this front and they're getting a lot of shear on them i do see good chances for tornadoes to come out of these cells today it's going to be a pretty extreme evening as you go through 8 p.m it moves further towards canada into northern michigan and you have a lot of purple still some chances for large hail two inches plus coming out of these cells as they pass through and it's still getting southeastern iowa at this time and it is getting some good shear on those in southeastern Iowa at this time is at 8 p.m.
but as well as these over here in Wisconsin. They are getting a lot of good shear, and the ones in northern Michigan is getting good shear on that one as well. Look at all the shear on that big supercell that's passing through. So all these cells has good chances to bring long-lived tornadoes, maybe even violent tornadoes. As we move through 9 p.m., now it starts showing that eastern Iowa gets into it. While you still have these nasty cells going towards the lake, still bringing very heavy hail threat. And this is where it gets towards Milwaukee. This is where my threat pretty much comes into play. And you see it also stretches all the way up towards Canada with these cells with purple in them bringing hail. And as it goes towards Michigan right here, it starts modeling down. But all these cells all have shear in them, even the one right here for eastern Iowa. That is a nasty little cell, and it is getting a lot of shear on it, as well as the ones coming through Wisconsin all the way up to northern Michigan. This supercell travels all through northern Michigan, so this whole line of storms is bringing some nastiness with it all evening along. As you go through 11 p.m., you notice all these storms start milding down when it starts heading towards northern Michigan right here. But the cells stay strong over the lakes as well as for Wisconsin and by 11 p.m. And this could bring some water spouts. So just be careful because there is some high winds with it as this line goes across northern Illinois, all across Missouri, northern Missouri. It is getting some shear on these cells as well as it comes across. So just be aware this has a good chance to go all evening long, all night. And as you go into midnight, then it starts strengthening up a little bit for Michigan. And when you look at this year, you see that it's pretty much going to be a lot of winds involved in that. But there might be a chance for a sleeper cell in that. So just be aware. But there is chances for hail with that. As well as all these storms from northern Illinois, as well as northern Missouri. It don't have a lot of shear on them, but the ones for Illinois does. So there's chances for everybody to get a chance for a tornado out of this system as it pushes through. And that's all the way to 1 o'clock in the morning. And it just keeps going through Michigan, through Illinois, and then it starts wilding down. So it will be a very significant event, guys. And as you check for your wind gusts with the 12Z of the high resolution rapid refresh, you can see right around 4 p.m. those cells in southwestern Wisconsin starts getting 60 miles per hour wind gusts with it. As it travels as a long lived cell, it starts getting even worse with the wind gusts and gains up to 70, almost 80 on that cell. As it goes towards 6 p.m., it travels even worse. This is going to be a long track chance for a long track tornado also. But now it gets up towards 90 on that cell. So it goes from 60 to 70 to 80 to 90. It just grows in strength as well as these other wind gusts coming on these other cells that is in that area. This is going to be some nasty cells that's going to be passing through, bringing a lot of damage and winds as well. And as it goes through 7 p.m., winds calm down a little bit, but you still got 50, 60, even chances for 70 in these cells as they pass by for Wisconsin. A little bit easier for northern Michigan. And as you go through 8 p.m., it starts wilding down with the winds. Goes towards Canada a little bit as you go towards 9. A little bit of northern Michigan as you go towards 10 p.m. But as you can see, that's the winds that's coming in front of it. You can see the bowing out in it. So it's not going to be a tornado because you don't have the cells in there at that time. But there are some damaging winds passing by with this system as it comes. And the worst threat is going to be this afternoon from 2 to 3 p.m. Really around 3 all the way until about 7 and 8 p.m. is when it starts molding down still some strong winds. But man, right when you go from 5 to 6 p.m., that's when it's going to get crazy. That's when it's going to go from 80 and 90 possible damaging wind gusts from some very strong, very nasty storm cells passing through. But your full run shows just a lot of long-lived cells, dangerous storms into this evening, guys. Northeastern Iowa, southeastern Iowa, all of Wisconsin except northwestern, but pretty much all of Wisconsin and northern Michigan, as well as Michigan over here. You got some cells that do carry on from the lakes. The lakes will give it some more strength and keep it going. But thank you so much, each one of you, for visiting my channel today. Uh, God bless you and your families. I pray you will be safe through everything that is happening and everything that is coming soon after as well. Please share this information. Help alert other people what's going on because this is multiple threats from multiple states. And a lot of these people that are going to be getting hit with this soon is still without power. So they're probably not even knowing what's going on. Phone may be even dead. So please help as much as you can. Thank you so much for your help. God bless every single one of you. 
Now, I will be around for a little while to answer any questions y'all may have, but remember, I do have to go get that food today before this weather gets too bad over here in Milwaukee. Well, once again, I expect it to maybe calm down a little bit, but it shows good chances for tonight. But I do have some things that I must go do. So thank you again. Hope you all have a great day. Today, I want to tell you something that's very special. Just a little reminder. John 21, 1 through 18. John is such a good chapter. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on the wise showed he himself. There were together Simon, Peter, and Thomas, called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana of Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his, his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and a fish laid thereon and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou was young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. Amen. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for all of you that has helped feed our sheep. Because I will keep doing this forever and ever till the Lord takes me home. Amen. So thank you for your help. If you do want to participate in that, make sure you check the links in the description. And if it is for food for our fellow brothers and sisters, make sure you mark that donation for food. 
Sorry the video is so long. There's a lot to talk about. I sure hope you did use the timestamps to get through what you needed. For those that watched the video all the way through, I love you so much. Thank you for supporting my family. It's people like you that didn't leave and retreat and run away through dark times. Thank you so much for you. All power. All glory. Does go to Yahweh. God of Jacob. Our Father. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you all.